He doesn't even claim to be a songwriter. In all of his writings, he claims, I was walking down the street and I heard someone say this, and he'd write it down, and he'd take it in, and he'd write a song. With the Cold War bearing down on the left, political folk song wasn't doing too well, but it was about to take a surprising new turn. People's songs had become quite an organization, but they were broke, they didn't have any money, and what do you do when you're broke? You have a big hoot and <laughs> The four of us got together to sing, sing this song in every land. Hey, lily, lily, low, stand together hand in hand. Hey, lily, lily, low, hey, lily, lily. Well, the banjos were playing and the guitars were playing and the people were stamping their feet and we were singing our heads off and it just absolutely went, the place went wild. And, and I remember... Pete saying afterwards, we were standing together looking at this thing happening, and he said, I think we have something here. That's how the Weavers started. We got a job down at the Village Vanguard for two weeks, for $200 a week. That was for all four of us. <laughs> and hamburgers, hamburgers too. Well, it turns out that the two weeks turned down into six months, you know. And it was during that time we became a very hot item to see in New York. Their fame spread and they got a contract with Decca. Within 20 minutes after that song was released, you could walk up and down Broadway and it was coming out of every single record shop. The song was a number one hit. Every radio station was playing it. It was, it was remarkable. See, this song came to us from the new land of Israel. It was written for lots of people to sing and dance together. And then, uh, I guess people were getting sick of it. They said, oh, let's turn this record over, see what's on there. And that was Goodnight Irene, and there we went again. So here we were now, big pop stars. Good Night Irene was Lead Belly's signature tune. He died just before the Weavers took it to number one. We learned this song, Irene, from a friend of ours. Some people thought he was the greatest folk singer that ever lived in America. Good night, Irene. Good night, Irene. I'll see you in my dreams. Lead Belly, when I met him, was very ill. And he played for us. His niece was there and she danced for us. <laughs> and he made me hold his guitar. I said, I can't play the guitar. But he said, well, just hold it and I'll show you some things. And he gave me a lesson on his guitar, on, the, on his 12-string guitar. So that was one of my big moments, I guess. And he died not long after that. Martha asked me to sing at his memorial. Lead Belly's friend Woody also played at a memorial concert for him, along with Tom Paley. They had to wait to go on. He had been going backstage and taking a nip of some drink. So when we actually did get up, he was a bit lit. But he did talk and talk and talk about Lead Belly and about various things. It felt like at least a half hour. <laughs> before we ever got to sing anything. Dream a dream, dream a dream, dream a dream a little sweeter. Often Woody didn't turn up at all. I remember calling his wife. I said, where's Woody? I, said, I don't know, he went out on Tuesday to get some cigarettes. He'll probably be back in a couple of weeks. He was one of my heroes, but I got a little bit annoyed at his not showing up for some of the gigs. It was the weaver's professionalism and jauntiness that fitted the mood of the time. 
folk ranch house style was now commercially viable. Do you remember Sweet Betsy from Pike? I loved Burl Ives recordings. I would glom onto anything that I could get a hold of that sounded like folk music. A big yellow dog, tall Shanghai rooster, and one spotted hog. You know, there would be like folk like songs like uh, Ghost Riders in the Sky and Cry of the Wild Goose and stuff like that. And I liked that music, it told stories. The tunes the Weavers did became common currency. Last Saturday night I got married. The Weavers had the golden touch. My wife settled down. Woody Guthrie didn't get an American royalty until the 1950s when the Weavers uh, had taken some of the rough edges off of folk music and popularized it. And we're singing songs like So Long, It's Been Good to it's Know been You. Good to know you. So which was indeed the first hit that Woody Guthrie ever had. But despite their smart clothes, the Weavers were almost the almanacs reincarnated. And that past was coming back to haunt them. I've sung this song, but I'll sing it again. Of the people I've met and the places I've been. The blacklisters were as surprised as we were. How did we let those commie so and so slip through our fingers? Singing so long, it's been good to know you. And they started chopping us down. It's been good to know you. So the world was closing in on the left. In June 1949, the man who was an idol to many in the American folk movement gave a concert in Moscow. Paul Robeson, ex-athlete and lawyer, often sang folk-type songs from Broadway musicals. His open support for the Soviet Union saw him pilloried at home. Paul Robeson was under severe attack as a communist, traitor and all of that, but he was still our hero and a hero of many thousands and thousands of people. Just three months after that Moscow visit, the embattled Paul Robeson held a benefit concert for the Civil Rights Congress in Peekskill, New York. On the way out, people were lined up on this narrow road out. The police, right next to them, they had piles of stones, and I got on a bus that was going out, and they smashed everything. They dragged people out of cars, they hurt people. We didn't know that we had fascism in America. Not us nice, liberal, white people. We didn't know. Found out. A publication called Red Channels pointed the finger at most people in the 30s and 40s folk movement. Alan Lomax decided to leave the country. And it was the death knell for the Weavers. Little by little, the radio stations wouldn't play our records. And we became pariah, you know, musical pariahs. After about three years, we finally had to call it quits. It was a terrible time. Uh, I could be walking down Broadway and I would see someone that I know very well coming towards me and as they approached they would cross the street because they couldn't afford to be seen talking to me. In Kentucky they said, you don't have anything to do with Pete Seeger, do you? And I said, yes, he's a, he's a friend of mine. And they would look at me kind of strange and uh, walk away. I want to die Lord, I Josh White was touring when Europe with Eleanor Roosevelt when Red Channels named him. Lord, Josh actually went to the people involved with Red Channels and said, look, why are you naming me as a communist? What do I have to do to persuade you that I'm not? And they suggested that he go voluntarily in front of the House Committee on Un-American Activities. Pete was saying, Josh, don't go down there until they call you. Don't romance it. I'm going to do it. Black entertainers were not 
asked to name names. Black entertainers were 